It's Steelers week, baby. And current Pittsburgh Steelers, former Detroit Lion, also former Miami Dolphin, but more importantly, former Baltimore Raven, Deshaun Elliott was talking spicy about the Baltimore Ravens on Marlon Humphrey and Jack Settlement's Punchline Podcast. We're going to get into that shortly. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. Y'all, hey, go crazy with it today. Let's go insane, because I know y'all ain't really going to like too much of what he had to say, but let's just... Let's jump straight into it. So, Marlon Humphrey, Jack Settlement, they had Deshaun Elliott on, in Steelers Week as a special guest on their Punchline podcast, and he had a lot of stuff to say. He was talking reckless about a lot of people. Not Lamar Jackson, though. Lamar Jackson, he made sure he gave Lamar Jackson his proper respect and his proper credit. But other than that, oh, yeah, he was going in. Um, he talked about how he felt the Ravens, they actually should have lost to the Bengals. Uh, on Thursday Night Football. He said they should have lost that game. But, of course, that, that wasn't the worst thing that he said. He talked about the Miami Dolphins. He said that he actually said that his game against Lamar Jackson last year, he said it don't count because he was on a team that was full of a bunch of people that was just soft. He said the Dolphins, he said the, the majority of that team was just a bunch of people with soft mentalities. And I said, oh, well, <laughs> so I guess what he had to say about the Ravens wasn't too bad, was it? But um, I said, wow, that, that's a lot right there. He brought up Patrick Queen. He said, and now this, it was, I, when I heard him say this, I said, what? He brought up how Patrick Queen this week is trying to avoid being in the locker room, trying to avoid the media because it's Ravens Steelers week. And he knows he's going to get asked a lot of questions about it. Now, he tried to save himself. He tried to clean it up because he was like, well, no, because Patrick Queen, he's going to be really focusing in on his game like the professional that he is. But he pretty much admitted that Patrick Queen is ducking the media, ducking the questions. Uh, because, of course, they will come up. He was a Raven for the majority of his career. He got drafted by the Ravens in the first round and played with them all four years. And then hey, they end up declining that fifth-year option, and he went to the Steelers. So uh, with Patrick Queen, um, it, and it's so weird because w- y'all remember this offseason, how Patrick Queen was talking, reckless, saying, I enjoy being a villain. I enjoy all the trash talk. But then when it happened, he's like, oh, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. I don't, I don't, and I just thought that was weird. I, I like Patrick Queen with the Ravens. I thought Patrick Queen, he was a good player. But it seemed like with, with this villain role, he didn't know just how to accept it or to be that villain. But anyway, um, he also talked about, uh, Marlon asked him how it is being on the other side. And Marlon even called him a traitor. Uh, but he said that Eric had the chance to resign him. But he chose to sign number 32 instead. He he ain't even addressed Marcus Williams by name. Now, could that be a sign of disrespect? Ah, It could be, could maybe not. Because a lot of football players, they address each other by number anyway. So I ain't really take it as that. But when he talked about Eric DaCosta, he also mentioned how the Baltimore Ravens said, why why they be letting a lot of their talented players go? Why do they do that? But when he talked about himself, um, he said, yeah, Eric DaCosta had a chance. But he didn't do it. And with that, um, I, I, no, I don't think any Ravens fan was surprised when Deshaun Elliott did not get re-signed by the Baltimore Ravens. Not to say that he was a bad player, because he wasn't a bad player. He did have his issues in coverage and whatnot. He was not no bad player. Though. Deshaun Elliott, one thing we loved about him, he was not afraid to come up and hit somebody. But with Deshaun Elliott, I, I think a, one of the biggest reasons why they didn't re-sign him, injuries. Injuries. Deshaun Elliott, he showed a lot of potential, but he would be hurt a lot. So, and, and this happened just about every year. He did have that one year where he started, but he just kept getting hurt over and over and over. And the Baltimore Ravens, you could tell they didn't view him as a full-time starter. They couldn't put their, put their full trust in a Deshaun Elliott as a starter because of the injury. So, when his contract came up, they moved on. And, and I, don't think, I don't think they made the wrong decision or anything like that. Even looking back at it, having a Deshaun Elliott would have been nice if he would have been the Deshaun Elliott that, has, that he's been now. And if he would have been a healthy Deshaun Elliott, oh, yeah, he would have been doing his thing. But he just wasn't that with the Baltimore Ravens. It's very similar, different, but similar to J.K. Dobbins. Ravens made the right decision with him, too. Drafted him. Gave him a shot, gave him an opportunity, put him out. He just kept getting hurt. Ravens didn't re-sign him. He goes on to, and, and Deshaun Elliott said this. He said, with a lot of the Baltimore Ravens players, and well, former players, he said, the, why do they go on to different teams and they really show their talent then? And with that, it's like, uh, you could say that about a lot of teams. You could say that for players that come to the Ravens. Like, look at uh, Jadavian Clowney. People called him a bust. People called him overrated. People called him this and that. He came to the Ravens. And so, whoa, okay, now, we see you. Look at Calvin Noy. 
This dude was chilling, free agent in a week three of the season last year. Ravens signed him off the couch. He comes in, has a little record year for himself. So you could say that both ways. Some players leave the Ravens and they get, get better. And it, everything's about opportunity. It's about system. It's about the right circumstance and whatnot. And, and again, that goes both ways. But Deshaun Elliott, he also brought up the defense. He said, what are y'all doing over there? He said, I see y'all number one in run defense, which is true. We, hey, we number one, baby. Let's go. But he said, y'all number 32 in pass defense. He said, are, are y'all even getting sacks? I was like, oh, okay, Deshaun, like, what? <laughs> okay. But it was just interesting. He had a lot more to say. You can check out, of course, the Punchline podcast so you can hear the rest of it. But Deshaun Elliott, he, he was, he's going in, man. But again, he, it wasn't just about the Ravens. It was mainly about the Ravens because obviously this week is, is big. But he was going on everybody. He even, um, I've never seen anybody do this before. He even, when he was talking about the Ravens wide receivers, he mentioned Rashad Bateman. He said Rashad Bateman, he's been able to really show his talents this year. And then he said, oh, and then they got the other guy. Um, they, he called him a, uh, not a joystick. He called him a, a jitterbug. And at first I thought he was talking Florida, Florida slang, but then I was like, no, no, he was actually talking about a jitterbug because he was like, the way he moves. He didn't even call him flowers. He called him flowers after like maybe 30 seconds later, but he didn't even dress as a flowers by name. I'm like, hold on, what you... Usually when I hear people talk about Ravens receivers, they'll talk about Zay Flowers first, and then Rashad Bateman, a lot of them may mention him, by they might say number seven, they may say Bateman, but depending on who it is, but he didn't even mention Zay Flowers, but I was like, well, okay, now Deshaun, hey, look, but bottom line, regardless of what Deshaun Elliott said, it's Steelers week, and Patrick Queen, Deshaun Elliott, like, yo, ooh, yo. <laughs> Y'all better not mess up. Oh, they better not mess up because Ravens fans don't forget. They don't forget. And it's, what's today? Wednesday, the game in a couple days on Sunday. Ravens fans will be watching every single play that Patrick Queen or Deshaun Elliott do. And actually, this case, hopefully don't make. Ravens fans going to be watching extra hard at both of those two. Because it's not only that they left the Baltimore Ravens. Because obviously, People lead the Baltimore Ravens every year, but it's the fact that and 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 I hey, shout out to Deshaun Elliott for owning up to it, being that man about it, not shying away from it, and like speaking directly to Ravens people. Like obviously Marlon Humphrey, a Ravens player, and Jack Settlement, a Ravens fan, so he wasn't shying away from it. Like he's owning up, he, but he's talking to trash. He's been running his mouth from a Baltimore Raven. But what Patrick Queen has been different, though, because like we talked about earlier, he was running his mouth when he first got signed by the Steelers. And Deshaun Elliott said it like, hey, he said money talks and all that other stuff walks. And then that's the team. Keep it clean. Version. Boy, that boy was not team. Keep it clean at all. But anyway, um, he talked about that with Patrick Queen, how uh, Eric Acosta, they, they didn't want to pay him. He went, he went somewhere where he was appreciated financial wise and whatnot. And hey, OK, good. that's good. That's the business. That's the business, but with Deshaun Elliott, it feels like when with Patrick Queen, he remembered that it was the business, but with himself, it seemed that he forgot the way that he talked about Eric Acosta and talked about the Ravens when it came to that. But this game, I, I, I like this, though. I, I like it, and I respect it because Deshaun Elliott, he, he brought more, even more excitement to this game than it already was there because we know the Steelers, they've been getting the Ravens recently. They've been getting them for one reason or another. I know a lot of games Lamar hasn't played against the Steelers, but even someone he has, like the Ravens been coming up short. Like last, last year, oh. it's like Lamar had a perfect game, but it got ruined from drops. Not one drop, not two drop, not three, like a million drops in that game. And it's like when he does make that one mistake, that fade route to the end zone, Odell Beckham Jr. on Joey Porter Jr., it's like, oh, okay, then it ends up being a pick. It's like, oh, you, you, you do everything right for so long, and then at the very end, you make more mistakes. Oh, and oh, okay, that's it, but this game... It'll be different. Now we reach my favorite part of these videos where you get to have your question featured. If you would ever like to be a part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. And if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. You can send it directly on Patreon. Before we get into it, make sure we give a big shout out to our newest Team Keep It Clean patron, our guy, James. So James, we appreciate you. You should have sent in a question to kick us off. But that's cool. James ain't want to get us kicked off. Omar will. Next question came from our guy, Omar, who, hey, next time, 
time. One, one pass and one pass only. Send it to the wrong email, please. Let's send it to the right. Anyway, he said, first time sending a message. I really appreciate your coverage. I, I discovered your channel this season and subscribe right away so I don't miss a post. Even got my son on board. Okay, shout out to you and your son, Omar. Appreciate y'all. He said, I got a comment on Ravens defense. The game against the Bengals seemed like the most pressure on the quarterback they've been able to produce in September. I could be wrong, but I felt it. I felt it that way. Uh, but it felt that way. Excuse me. You're right. It, you are one thousand percent right. It's actually statistically the um. I think it was the game. The, the most the, it was their most pressure game this season, but also the I think the second most pressure game this entire season out of the whole NFL. But anyway, uh, he said, because of that, I have a good feeling the defense will put on a strong showing on Sunday. Russell Wilson likes to push the ball downfield, so that should provide plenty of opportunities for the Ravens defense to get sacks or force Aaron throws. That's a really, really good point. So secondary, safeties especially, you got to be on point, especially if Kyle Hamilton don't play. Uh, he said, my question is, if the Ravens decide to blitz instead of the tackles, who's the best Option. Oh, inside of the tackles, who's the best option? The defensive line has been able to provide a push, but when they decide to bring additional inside pressure, it's not getting there. The defense needs that pressure inside to force some bad throws from Wilson. Appreciate your insight and keep up the great work. Appreciate you, Omar. Um, obviously, Travis Jones is going to be a big part of that. Justin Matabike and Travis Jones. Obviously, they're not blitzes because they're already on the defensive line. But I will say Trent Simpson, Arthur Millett, but a surprise, Marlon Humphrey. Reality check. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, hello, Owen Graven. I offer prayers for you and your family. Get down to business because this is really eating me up. How come the media is acting like no one heard Mahomes asking the referee for the help in the Broncos game? Lord knows if that were Lamar, we'd have to hear about it all season. And the narrative would be, how many games did the refs actually help him? Uh, do, does he really deserve those MVPs? But with Patrick, it never happened. Sorry it's long, but that really bothers me. Many prayers for you and yours. I think, yeah, there might be a misconception with that um, because I I'm pretty sure he was actually asking the refs about his own offensive linemen. So, looked like there was a little misconfusion. Next question came from my guy, Christopher. He said, what's up, bro? Hope all is well. Love the show. Appreciate it, Chris. He said, uh, keep it up and keep it clean. My question is, I like that. He said, my question is, what do you think the chances are that we get Micah in the offseason and make it back-to-back -back chips? I like how you talking. I like how you talking with a free agent like that. Dallas probably going to resign him, though. But I like, my, more importantly, I love how you said back-to-back -back chips because you saying we went into this year and next year. I love this already. But um, the chances of getting Micah Parson, I, I think, are low. Um, they got Adolfo away coming back. They got Kyle Vannoy signed next year, too. They still got David Ajabo. Now, I'm not saying that I think those should prevent you from getting somebody like Micah Parsons at all. I would love if they got Micah Parsons because he's somebody that can do so many different things. But I, I just don't see the Ravens dishing out the money to spend on him. A small coach. Next question came from my guy Thomas. He said, just because you drafted a wideout doesn't mean they have to play that position. I, as a coach, would use the double-edged sword and train possible players to other spots as a wide out as a safety or as an in the cornerback spot there comes a time when you have to stop crossing oceans for people when they won't even jump puddles for you hmm okay so are you thinking about having some players play some different positions uh i feel like when, when, if you do that especially the footwear ravens if you make somebody a jack of all trades and they would end up being a master of none so i i, I you see what you're saying but that's more of a i think Little league, and then of course in high school, even a li little bit in college too. But once they hit the pros, it's like it's more more of a business. And I gotta say, more of a business because obviously when you do all those things, it leads up to. I mean, all of it, it can be business because you're trying to get to the league. More more than likely trying to get to the league if you're playing little league uh, all the way up through high school, college, and all that. But um, I feel like with the NFL, like they want to be a master of one because uh, they trying to get paid at whatever position that they play. They're trying to specialize in that position. They're trying to be the best at that position. I see what you're saying because if you have different people doing different things, like if it's a cornerback, then okay, if you're going to make them a cornerback, inside corner, outside corner, uh, safety, okay, they just a DB, straight up DB. Um, but for offense and defense, I, I just... Nah, I wouldn't do it. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, Tomlin gave respect to players being compared to Lamar. Oh, yeah. He said, uh, Jay, he said you got to slow down with the Jaden Daniels stuff comparing him to Lamar because ain't nobody like him. And Tomlin trying to be slick. He trying to, like, boost Lamar head up and boost the Ravens' heads up so they don't take this game as seriously. Tomlin, you, you ain't slick. You done did this before. And it worked. But it ain't no how to work this time. Uh, he said, hope uh, for Sunday's game of offense and defense play great for the first time in a long time with a statement win. We will love that. Uh, in the press conference, John mentioned having a three-headed monster in the backfield with the running backs. More snaps for Deontay Johnson and Tredavious White getting some playing time at cornerback on Sunday. What are your thoughts? I mean, that's all expected. Um, 
Keith Mitchell will be back another week in practice. Deontay Johnson will be have been here for more time now, so he can get more acclimated to the offense and be more comfortable with it. And Tredavious White, I mean, <laughs> our secondary need all the help that they could get, so no surprise there. He said oh, he also mentioned Brandon Stevens or keeping Brandon Stevens as an outside corner instead of moving him to safety. And we should see Trey as corner as well this Sunday. Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I would I would have loved if they would have moved Brandon Stevens to safety or at least tried it because, again, our secondary needs all the help that we can get. Like he said, do you see Tylen Wallace's playing time increasing? I do. I said Cole Jackson broke down the team's defense, noting that they play better in man-to-man coverage versus zone coverage. You, you know, I'm no film guy at all. I'm no X's and O's guy. I couldn't tell you a lot of that stuff. But that's something that even somebody like me saw, too. Like, but for the Ravens, they just... They decide to go against it for whatever reason. Anyway, he said, with that being said, do you think Zach will keep playing his same way and give up 800 yards, or do you think he will try to play more man instead of zone or play T23 more instead of having role plays, playing a slot receiver, and stop being predictable on defense? Ooh, the pettiness of that one. He said, thanks for all you do, and just know God has big plans for you, like Michael Parsons did on his postgame interview about Mike McCarthy. I'm out. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was throwing a little shade there. I said, like, whoa, Michael. He also said, watch the podcast with Marlo, and he had Deshaun Elliott in as a guest. Here's some things that I got from it, and like your thoughts EDC chose to pay oh, okay we covered that he said EDC chose to pay 32 instead of him yeah we talked about that earlier Baltimore didn't appreciate him or PQ we talked about that and the Ravens tend to let talent walk instead of paying we talked about that and he said PQ wants to make a statement on Sunday against us and avoiding the media oh yeah we talked about all that so okay that's all been covered he also said few few questions for you so here I go can this offense make it to the Super Bowl with this defense yes they just got to be an uh, extra lights out offense like they gotta be a lights out and lights on the offense to make it with this defense, but the defense can get better. They just gotta make a few changes here and there. He said, "How do you think this line will hold up against the Steel Curtain defense? We struggle with Max and Chris Jones, but the Steelers have three or four legitimate pass rushers. It's gonna be tough. I would expect Pat Ricard to be in a lot more on like pass down, passing downs. Um, Justice Hill, see a lot of Justice Hill this game, but I think they might use Pat Ricard maybe as an extra lineman, extra tight end. I would expect the tight ends to be uh, as used as extra linemen in this game too, just so they can have Baltimore Ravens could have additional protection. And it all just depends on how the game is going, man. Because um, uh, adjustments are going to be every. I mean, you can say that for every game, but certainly in this game, adjustments are going to be everything. Tough decisions. Next question came from my guy Tyreek. He said, "What's up, Ray? Hope everything is going well." Just had a quick thought that I wanted to hear. That I wanted you to hear. Uh, Something needs to get fixed our secondary in order for us to really make a playoff run. I just want to touch on our corners and safeties with Eddie Jackson and Marcus Williams looking terrible this season. About switching, about uh, how about switching Brandon Stevens to safety and have Nate Wiggins, Marlowe, and Trey White as our three starting corners? Well. Harbaugh already answered that question for you, and he shut it down. He said, nope. And he said, or oh, just bench Marcus Williams and give the Rook Bo Braid a shot. It's better off to try now before it's too late. Plus, it can't get any worse. That last statement that you said, it can't get any worse, is true. Uh, but we'll see how what the Ravens do to try to help make it any better. Is the window closed? Next question came from my guy, Javon. He said, what's up, Greg? I hope all is well with you and the family, brother. I'm sure we are, we, we are all stressed out watching that game against the Bengals. However, we got the win, and that's what matters. D-line played well last night uh, with Jones back in the mix, which is a great thing because pass rush has been a fear. However, that secondary we felt so strongly about doing OTAs and training camp looks like a gargantuan issue. It seems like they aren't playing together. Communication is the downfall, in my opinion. Dude, spot on, spot on. Like he said, there's no way on that three and seven, three to seven second touchdown drive to chase. Marcus Williams didn't know the ball was in the air. As defensive players, you're told to scream, pass, or run to help each other out. So does that mean no one said anything? Washington did a good job filling in for Hamilton after the injury. Here's the question I would like to hear your opinion on. With such a dominating offense, can we win the bowl with this defense? Yeah, we can. We can. Like I said, offense just got to be on another level. He said, I feel uh, at best we might repeat our last year's success and make it to the AFC Championship game, with, which isn't enough. Lamar deserves a ring and finally have a, enough to make that run. But now the one thing that's holding him back is our 27th ranked defense. We're that high? We're that, oh, that must be run defense helping us out. Because if we 27 ranked, that's, that's really high for what the, it seems like the Ravens are. He said, I hope for this mini buy that thing that changes are made. Uh, yeah, hey, we can hope so. We'll see in a couple of days if they are. Uh, but he said, thanks and great and peace and love and to you and your family. Uh, and peace and love. The team, keep it clean. Appreciate that, Javon. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, hey, team, keep it clean. Hope everybody's doing well on here. As for you and the family, I wish the same. Do you think Zach or the defensive play calling would be better if he was in the booth and able to see the whole field? Ah, uh, he could try it. He could try, like, look, it, it's been bad. He could try it. Like, I'm really willing for the Ravens to try whatever to help this thing get better. Again, players, personnel, they got to do better. But Zach or the defensive staff, they got to do better, too. So they should be willing to try any and everything at this point. They look exactly the same. Next question came from my guy, TJ. He said, God bless the family, the channel, and all Ravens. And Graven, they look exactly the same. Where is the difference makers that we added? No DJ or Trey White. I pray we win the Super Bowl and let EDC go. He said, I pray we win the Super Bowl and let EDC go. 
Now you, now you know, like that ain't happening. Whether the Ravens win the Super Bowl or not, they will. But even if they didn't for some reason, but, but they will. You know, EDC, ain't go, he ain't going nowhere. Next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Raven? This has been a crazy season for our Ravens so far. I was thinking back to the 20, 2006 season uh, when the Ravens had that dominant 13-3 and three team that lost to the Colts in, in 15-6 in that field goal game. And the Colts went on to win the Super Bowl that year. Oh, I remember that game. That game hurt so bad. That was a Steve McNair year. I'm like 99% sure. But yeah, they just kept kicking field goal, field goal, field goal. Even got some interceptions, but couldn't do nothing. Just field goal. Oh, it's so frustrating. Anyway, he said, I bring that up because people forget that that year during the regular season, the Colts defense was terrible all year and Peyton Manning in the offense carried them until the end of the year and their defense turned it around and I, I, and they got hot going into the playoffs. I'm just laying out hope that the Ravens can turn this defense around and get hot because I've seen it done before. Just my thoughts. Howard, I love that and we're going to end it on that extremely hype positive note.